Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Portuguese airshow collision kills one pilot and injures another. Electra test aircraft achieves its first ultra-short e-stole takeoff and landing. NASA ops push Starship tourism back. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Talon Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Portuguese airshow collision kills one pilot and injures another. A combined Spanish-Portuguese aerobatic demo team suffered a fatality at the Beja Air Show when one of their aircraft clipped another during a performance. The show was held in the southern region of Portugal, the performing team's own backyard given their base in Ponte de Sor. Apparently, the lost pilot was the only one to die, with the other making a landing without incident. Surprisingly enough, there were no injuries to bystanders or those below. They attempted to resuscitate the pilot, but were unable to make the best of his injuries. The other pilot, also a Yakstar's man, was taken to the hospital despite light injuries just to make sure everything turned out okay. In the end, they expect the case will be complete with only one fatality, making it a rarity for continental Europe, but another somewhat high-profile reminder for summertime showrunners. As always, the incident is under investigation there. The Portuguese Air Force is weighed in, demurely thanking the fate that only performers were involved in an air show accident. They described their sorrow and empathy for the loss and sent their condolences onward, but didn't grant much additional detail. And after the break, Aerox offering Cylinder Sentinel application. Flying is my entire life. It's all that I've ever known. I've relied on Hartzell propellers since about 1995. Hartzell means much more than a propeller. It's a relationship. When you hear the phrase, built on honor, they care about us as pilots, they care about our community, and they care about the product they build. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Aerox offering Cylinder Sentinel application. Aerox has now made its Cylinder Sentinel application compatible across the board, allowing operators to wirelessly check the current condition of their Aviation O2 bottles wherever they are in the plane from a simple phone. The system doesn't require the installation of any extra batteries or wiring either, though that doesn't quite mean it does the job with air pressure. Instead, a CR2050 battery is retained in the install kit, which includes a T-fitting to retain the manual pressure gauge as backup. The Aerox app is available for both iOS and Android systems. Annual TBM Reunion draws 10 Avengers. The annual TBM reunion took place on May 17th and 18th at Illinois Valley Regional Airport. Despite challenging weather conditions across the nation, 10 TBM Avengers flew in to participate in the event. The CAF's Ghost Squadron has three TBM Avengers, and the Rocky Mountain Wings TBM 309 and the Missouri Wings TBM were present. Unfortunately, the Capitol Wings TBM Doris May couldn't attend due to an ongoing maintenance project on the propeller. This year's show featured a special event on Friday night, the TBM Glow, a popular nighttime TBM Avenger engine run-up. NASA's Hubble temporarily pauses its science mission. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope entered safe mode May 24th due to an ongoing gyroscope issue, suspending science operations. 
Hubble's instruments are stable, and the telescope is in good health. The telescope automatically entered safe mode when one of its three gyroscopes gave faulty telemetry readings. Hubble's gyros measure the telescope's slew rates and are part of the system that determines and controls precisely the direction the telescope is pointed. NASA will provide more information early the first week of June. Utah Courts AAM Utah publicized a bevy of AAM plans centered around their new Air Logistics Transportation Alliance project, or Project ALTA. They describe it as a, quote, collaborative partnership with the mission to establish an advanced air mobility system for Utah, end quote. But it seems to be closer to a public-private middleman designed to ease integration into existing infrastructure. New tech brings a lot of new headaches, with all kinds of demands for each little system and design. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Electra test aircraft achieves its first ultra-short e-stole takeoff and landing. Electra has successfully achieved the first high-performance ultra-short flight operations of its piloted blown lift hybrid electric short takeoff and landing demonstrator aircraft, EL2 Goldfinch. The test flights piloted by Cody Alley took place through April and May 2024 at the Manassas Regional Airport and Warrington Fauquier Airport in Virginia. The longest flight lasted 1 hour 43 minutes. During the campaign, the aircraft took off in less than 170 feet and landed in under 114 feet ground roll. The aircraft reached an altitude of 6,500 feet and flew as slowly as 25 knots on takeoff and landing. Data and insights gained from the flight test program will inform the design of Electra's nine-passenger commercial Eastol aircraft, with entry into commercial service under FAA Part 23 regulations targeted for 2028. Electra's blown lift design uses eight electric motors to significantly increase wing lift, allowing the Eastol aircraft to take off and land in just one-tenth of the space needed by conventional aircraft. This enables access to locations that today only helicopters can reach. Quiet electric motors dramatically reduce noise and emissions for community-friendly operations. Hybrid electric power provides long-range capability without the need for ground-based charging stations. After these messages, NASA Ops push Starship Tourism back. Hello, pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. NASA Ops Push Starship Tourism Back A Japanese billionaire announced he would be pulling out of a prospective flight aboard one of SpaceX's Starships about six years after buying a ticket, citing a morass of delays and scheduling issues. The basic problem comes down to the launch schedule, as it always does. SpaceX hoped to bootstrap development with fresh funding from would-be space tourists, but NASA's selection of the Starship platform for serious space missions threw all those plans into disarray. Now, Miyazawa says he is no longer on board, having signed on in 2018 for a launch date in 2023. Now it's become clear that the Dear Moon launch won't be happening any time this decade, with all of Starship's schedule taken up with official duties, shakedowns, and tests. It is what it is in the grand scheme of things. SpaceX only has so much throughput in terms of payload, and there are only so many calendar days in a year, so many spacecraft, and so many demands. Meizawa hasn't mentioned a renewed program along the same lines either, but it's notable he's already gotten some space time in his logbook when he went aboard the ISS for a 12-day stint. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.